flags. Here we go. Center, Wisconsin, the 95 Dodge, he calls the General. too long ago. Still wow. knows how to do it. Shake the rust off the glove, yeah. and away we go. Away you go. Green on green. Here we go with the red Cadillac. Monday night, October 2nd. Where did the summer go? Um, we we are going to do our celebration of points champions and our puller that we had lined up tonight had something pop up on the farm. So you get stuck with just the three of us tonight for a few minutes unless we come up with something cool. So I did play the Powerball. I did not win the Powerball. John, did you get your Powerball tickets, Greg? I did. No. Well, didn't win either. Well, I haven't checked them yet. Yeah, they, usually here. they know where there's a winner and they didn't say it was here. <laughs> they didn't say soccer. Nope. So I think everybody um, should get their Powerball tickets, and then they can have pro stocks like like Greg Elsing. We get a bunch of mini rods like Stranley, so it's all good in the hood. So welcome, everybody, down and dirty with the Badger State Tractor Pullers. Every single Monday night of our lives, we spend here at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on the YouTube and the Facebook. Uh, I'm Jason Schultz with the Beer Money Pulling Team. John Stranley, the one of the voices of the Badger State Tractor Pullers. Greg Elsing, El Mr. Presidente of of the uh, of the Badger State Tractor Pullers, also owner driver of the Pro Stock T8 Tomcat. So, welcome everybody. Oh, Burkholt said Gallitz won it. <laughs> so, uh, it's all good. Uh, Colin, I'm going to send you a link, and you're going to join the show tonight because we kind of we found out about five minutes before the show our puller couldn't come on. So, I'm going to send you the link right now. Colin Burkholtz is going to be our special guest tonight, Stranley. So, that will work. That's kind of how we named the show. Remember, John? Yep. That first yep. one, we just kind of we let the we let the people pick, we let the people yep. choose. Yep. Yep. Down and dirty. Down hey, dirty. oh, we got a couple of minutes. The uh, raffle tickets are uh, flying out the door, and I think Jack Spots has uh, just a handful of books left. So this is your last call. I'm hoping your last call for uh, raffle tickets. 
Um, if you're looking to get them, let us know. So I just had two books given to me uh, today. I got them in the mail. I'm pretty sure they're all spoken for. But if uh, someone wants raffle tickets yet, let me know. I had a couple people here on my list to call back. Now they got them. Make sure they want them. And, uh, yeah, it's a great deal. First prize is $25,000. Second prize is $15,000. Third prize is $10,000. Only 1,000 tickets sold, and you get three chances to win those prizes out of 1,000 tickets. So. One in 334 people will win. Yep. So there you go. And for, for those of you that don't understand the Tom the Tom Gallant's jokes, we've been doing this for five years now, Greg, the big raffle like that? At least, at least five years. <laughs> and uh, Tom Gallant has won it twice. <laughs> he, he bought one ticket each time, he says. Yeah. I don't believe that. Yeah. I don't Which believe one? that. <laughs> yeah, so that's it helps benefit the American Family Children's Hospital as well. And uh, it's a project that's near and dear to Badger State's heart. And uh, there's a room at the UW Children's Hospital named after the Badger State Tractor Pullers. And last year, we really amped up the program, especially at the banquet with the auction. And we hope to do the same this year. Uh, should be a lot of fun. So go to a good cause. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then last week, we had Andy Cartwright on, our light pro stock champion. Um Came on the show. We talked about his season. That was kind of fun. We, you know, kind of go hook by hook there and do that. John, who else was announcing Monroe? We opened up the show tonight with some winter videos from Monroe. Who else was announcing down there? That was Bear Gary. He was it really? His, yeah, he announces for East Central Iowa. And he, uh, I know Bear. Yeah, he's a super cool guy. We announced together in Dubuque, and uh, we had a lot of fun in Dubuque, side by side, and and we had a. Opening there that night, so he helped us out and we had a lot of fun. He had a lot of fun, I think, too. So no, he sounded good, he sounded good on the mic. So, yeah, he was a lot of smiling, a lot of giggling going on. So, he was, yeah, that was, it was a good time. We did a very good time. I like it, liking it. He did, he did a great job. Yep, you know, I've been watching some of the YouTube videos, John, so I wasn't sure who that voice was. I recognized it. But I wasn't sure, and I've been meaning to ask you every Monday night, and then I always have ADHD, and then I never get to it right away. So, again, every Monday night we do this show. Uh, just anything happening in the Badger State Truck and Tractor Pullers, John, Greg, and I are talking about it. Um, our goal is to have a uh, points champion on every Monday leading up to the banquet, and then we obviously get into the banquet, and then we're heading into winter. We start talking about Shipshawana and then Louisville, where some Badger State Pullers will get a go and uh, participate and share uh, their show off their Badger State proudness out there on the national level with everybody. So we don't have a ton of talk about tonight. We wanted to touch on wanted to touch on the raffle tickets. Um, John, who are our sponsors again of our Down and Dirty show? Our great sponsors is uh, Farm Street Toys. Uh, Matt Caster and them. Uh, Casper A. Ed Casper, great great Casper A. Helping us out. Trip Downing on uh, his farms and also Salama Enterprises helping us out. So we can't thank them enough. Great. Great sponsors helped us out. And it takes a lot of work to get this done. And it, it takes quite a bit of equipment to get, get rounded up to do this too. You know, so we're, we're getting better top notch equipment, I suppose. Right. I, I'm doing whatever uh, Schultz tells me to buy. Right. <laughs> it's all on Schultz's shoulders. It's all yeah. from hell. And I give them oh, that guy. Old that guy. Hell made camera equipment. That guy. That guy over there. So. Yep. Here, here's a cool cat coming on right here. Cool cat, Burkholz. Yeah. Yep. Colin has a lot of fun. Uh, I love him and his dad. Him and his dad, him and his dad are responsible for me getting my first pulling. Well, not my first pulling tractor, but my yeah, first Badger State tractor. I bought a hot farm from their neighbors. So Colin, our um, one of our points champion, was going to come on tonight, and they can't because of farming. So we got stuck with you. So welcome to Down and Dirty with the Badger State Tractor Pullers. <laughs> Got nope. stuck with you. We're proud to have you on. Thank you. Yeah, we are. Yeah, Colin's frozen. Uh, Colin, I did the mortgage on Colin's house. I know where he lives. It's out in the country. So oh. his internet is um, there. Here's Colin. Um, good. Ooh, I think our guest might be sounding like Mr. Roboto here. So mm. Let's see if I get better internet connection. That sounded better. Well. 
So we'll give him another chance to come on. If anybody has any questions for Greg or John, please throw them in the comments. Um, It'd be fun to get Kyle's opinion on uh, co component tractors in the class. What he thinks of it. Yep. You know, yay or nay. You know, get people Does thinking. That, well, just while, while we're waiting for him, what the rule is, if you have a component tractor, I think you have to run 200 pounds lighter right now. Correct. Is that, that's what it is. And, uh, yep. and that's going to be adjusted depending on how well, or, you know, how things go the way it sounds. Yes. I think, um, when I talked to John at Louisville, he said they were going to really watch it and kind of see kind of the same thing you did, Greg, when you did the light limiteds and you let the alcohol, the alkyl tractors come full. Yep. You know what I mean? So, yep. Hey, Colin. There, I got a lot better internet connection in this room. Yeah. Hey, thanks for jumping on tonight. I know it kind of short notice, but you watch the show every Monday night. So, if you don't know this, Colin Burkholz, um, the, the IH 1465, that's an inside joke. Um, yeah. Late pro stock <laughs> out of Wilton, Wisconsin. That was said at one of the, I think one of the rules meetings, and I still giggle about that all the time. So, uh, yeah. look at Stanley. Look at Stanley. Hey, it was, it was, it was for good reason. It was because we were on the top of the list for selling the tickets, the raffle tickets. <laughs> there you go. I love it. I love it. So, um, Colin is our special guest tonight. If you have any questions, comments, please throw them up there. But let's talk like pro stocks. Definitely, a, it's a really, really growing class, Colin. Um, you know, we got really good numbers in Wisconsin now. I'm starting to see, I might say, people crossing the the proverbial NTPA slash uh, Badger State line and really putting on some, you know, having some good numbers at some events. Um, are you guys? I feel like all you guys get along pretty well and you talk, and I, I feel like you and your dad and Randy go support some WTPA, and we're starting to see more of those guys come down here as well when they can. Um, is that kind of the feeling that you have, Colin, with light pro stocks in Wisconsin? Yeah, we're definitely starting to see a lot more crossover, um, you know, especially in events that are in the southern part of the state, like Lancaster, the places that have a really good track. Um, you know, on a good day, if everybody comes together, we can get 10 to 12 tractors and we put together a really good class. And it's really exciting to see what the future looks like. I really uh, can't wait to see. Hopefully next summer, um, I think FAMO Bills are planning to have another one out. Um, uh one of the websters chad uh not chad uh craig webster plans on coming down with the red one a lot he wants to come pull so it's we're gonna have some good good trackers next summer yeah jj out is too yep jj out stuff it's it, we're gonna have a really good exciting class um anybody can win in any given night it's we're really good group of tractors like you knew i was giving andy a bunch of talking a bunch of crap to Andy last week, but it's, it's all in good fun. We get along real well. Yep. Yep. So Colin, what's your take on uh, component tractors in the class? Uh, yay or nay or good? Or what do you think? I, I'm on the side of just, I'd like to find out what it'll take for them to run together. I'd say, um, I think it's, it's what's best for the class to grow a lot easier. I'd say, um, if anybody wants to build new, they can, build a component but then again we got to find a way that somebody who builds a new egg doesn't feel like they're wasting their time either i think that'd be the best way to figure this out hopefully this next summer with ppl running around the country hopefully they can get some good intel i'm open for it it doesn't bother me at all right well you know the 200 pounds lighter like component chassis yes runs what they're started with and i know john talked about uh changing that if it uh if it comes to that, you know, if it's, if, if they need more weight or they have to take more away from them to make it even, you know, just kind of pay attention. Like we did with the alcohol tractors, like uh, Jason said earlier, the alcohol tractors in the light limited class, you know, yeah. we started that and just ended up all working out pretty well. Yeah, I can, I appreciate the open-mindedness. Um, I think it's, it's a good way to handle things. Um, and I, <clears throat> so, there's a lot of different variables you got to think about. Sometimes there's, I think anybody who, like anybody that I know that's going to build a component, they're going to be tough runners regardless. So maybe it's just if you threw that motor and egg chassis, it might still win anyways. But, you know, there's maybe different types of tracks where a component might work better. But um, I just – I'd look, I'd like to find out at least. Yep. Movable weight is always an advantage. Yeah. That's where – if it was up to me, I think the starting – if it was up to me to start, I think you'd go 87 for eggs just to give us a couple hundred pounds movable weight and then do components 82. Um, that's how I would do it. But I, I don't mind the 200 pounds. I just think you got to start somewhere. Yep. Yep. 
Well, that's what they were talking about rather than adding more weight to uh, the play. You know, because a lot of guys really lightened up their tractors and chat. Don't want to throw more weight at it where it's going to get aggressive. Why not take it away from the component guys where they have more movable weight already? Yeah, you know? I, I would say so. Yeah. You start putting too much weight on your tractors and, you know, you know, you just, you changes your gearing and it's your drive line stuff. So knows you don't want you know, you know what i mean yeah yeah i'd agree and and yep. um a lot of, i've seen a lot like ostp runs a combo class at nine thousand. they it works pretty good but um i don't mind the 80 85 and 82 or 83 i think it's i think it'll be fine yep i think it will be too see see what happens maybe give 100 and 100 away or something if you have to yeah yep yeah is there any of them running components anywhere right now None yet. There will be probably probably up to five next summer, I think. I'd probably maybe two or three to start the summer, maybe up to five by the end of the year. That's just what I can tell. Big old douche bag. I'm not keeping the ice cream over. <laughs> Welcome home, honey. Welcome home. <laughs> <laughs> Not only do we show you the Badger State Tractor Board, we show you behind the scenes at John Stanley's house there. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> was, it's quiet here. Only thing I got is a dog laying outside the door here in the hall. Oh, that's your house, Colin? Yeah, that was my house. No, oh, I thought that was Stranley's <laughs> house. No. Wow. <laughs> no. I thought that was Stranley's house there. That's funny. So. Colin, what's your first um what's your first tractor tractor pulling memory of your dad? Um when I was little I remember we'd pull over at Kendall on Labor Day. He'd pull, then he'd come around the track and when you'd come around you'd come in front of the stands. I was when I was a little boy, I could climb over the little climb over the snow fence and then uh uh get on get on the fender and ride on onto the pits. It was kinda neat. Yep. You always pulled red ones. Yep, always had the fourteen fifty six. That's all I can remember. Um, I think he had a seven oh six back in the day before I was born, but it has always been the fourteen fifty six since I since I can remember. Yep, that's cool. Then big changes between the hot farm and then jumping up. Beautiful looking tractor you guys got. Always been a sharp tractor and good running track. Even the hot farm and sharp looking and there's a. A hard charger, so you guys definitely got a piece to be proud of. Yeah, it's I give credit to Dad. It's he's pretty meticulous and keeping her clean and stuff. I don't, I don't have the patience for that at all. You know, between uh, polishing the insides of the rims, polishing it, all the stainless on the frame rails, and wiping everything down, it's I've got it pretty easy. But it's, um, it's his piece, and I. If, I was, if it was mine, I'd treat it that way, too. Did, Did you drive so well? Yeah, he drove it over at uh, Spencer, Iowa, an outlaw hook. He took it over there the day after Monroe made a pass over there. We we did a lot of dirt dyno, and we didn't have time to dyno start the year, so I, we did a lot of toying around and seeing what we could find. And So we wanted to get one more pass on it before the year ended, so I – Sent him over to Iowa and make a pass on it. Did a pretty good job. Good group of tractors. And so he did good. Yeah. So. Even uh, Wisconsin snowmobiling sticker on the side there. Yep. We're big snowmobilers. And dad does a, cares a lot. It's his, it's his winter passion is grooming during the winter. Um, we both live right off the trails. So he, his, his baby's a bike. The bike trail during the winter just spends a lot of hours. Gets some money for the snowboard clubs for from the state for tourism. It's we always got to have our winter winter hobby. So that is a lot of tractor pullers do snowmobile too. Yep. yep. Be nice if we could do more. Be nice if we could do more around home, but yeah, got to go where the snow is. Don't right. bother me. Well, the almanac says there's big snow this winter again, anyways, right? I don't. I'll remember. take it. Is that almanac ever right, Greg? I don't no, think ever. <laughs> no, no, no snow, no snow. First world. Keep, keep the snow from South County up. Right. Yep. Yeah. 
snow. No snow here. Once and stays here. That's that'd be the best. There's no yeah. one here. It's snow around, you know, just for Christmas, and then everybody can have be home for the holidays, and then that can turn seventy and sunny, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Colin, does your dad does still milk cows on the farm? No, nope, he sold them in spring of 2020. He got out, so got a lot, got a lot more time in the summer now. So time to get away. We fo ma mainly focus on our hay farming now. So. Uh, yep. Oh, yeah. Alpha, alpha. Bailed or haylage? Uh, mostly big squares. Uh, does some bailage, but uh, we had a. It was a great year to get dry hay this year, Dad. Usually plants on making a lot of rap tea this year, but didn't get that opportunity, which is okay. But, uh, you know, dry hay is worth pretty good money right now. But, yeah. uh, you know, some of second, third crop got pretty dry there. Didn't really get that tall, but actually had a pretty good resurgence in some fourth and fifth crops here after we got this rain here last week. So I, I, just, put, I, just, I just put some down last weekend, so we're going to try to get some done. We went to the Oakwood Fruit Farm uh, yesterday afternoon after, and I seen more guys making hay than I did uh, chopping or making corn, got corn or beans out that way. So yeah, it was it was looking pretty sad there before we got that rain, but now we got yeah. a little headway here. Now the end of this week's looking pretty cool, but it'll warm back up. Yep, yep, and hay will grow even at fifty degrees. Yeah likes it there colin we always ask the guys i uh, i know you've heard us ask the guys if you could drive a different tractor or somebody else's no worries whose would it be what uh, i would probably have to be a pro stock uh you know red guy but i mean if i i drive wildman's wildman's john deere or right now or you know if, if it was a Within the Badger State, I'd probably choose that. But if it was, you know, within the whole country, it'd probably be Ross's Diesel Super. That yeah. thing's just insane. It's. I was well, kind of It was kind. Of, I was kind of bummed I didn't get to see it run at Toma this year. They had a bad run, but oh well. We've got a Diesel Super now. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, he did. He did say the high He'll speed. be too cute. He'll be too, he'll be too busy taking videos. I'll take it for him and take him for a ride at Toma. Yeah, you can take no, no, I'm gonna find I'm gonna find time, Colin. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh, where's your favorite place to pull, Colin? On the Badger State Circuit. Well, it's kind of tough to choose because it's uh probably it was Hills probably Hillsboro last year, obviously. Okay. Rump. Toma's been a big, big thing in my life every year, but out of everything in the Badger State Circuit, it'd be between Hillsboro and Monroe. Pretty okay. close between those two. We got the pull for the first time at Hillsboro this year, but Monroe's pretty fun. They usually treated us good there. Um, get along good with Mark Hawthorne. Glad he has us there first every year so we can pull and just relax and watch the rest of the pole. It's kind of nice. Yeah, it's too bad it got rained out, huh? Uh, yeah, we we were already we I think we took off after three or four light light limited supers. Dad wanted to get a good headway over to Spencer, but and I went home because wife was hunting. I wanted to make sure she got a deer. I had to be there to help her with it, but they got her skunk. So we'll we'll try again this weekend. Yeah, where do you live? Where do you live right now, Colin? I live about four miles from Dad, just down in the valley now. I used to live in Oshkosh till this past winter. And now I moved, so okay. now it's quick and easy. I can go to work. I I make a plastic injection molds, tool and die during the day, and then get home. I can help Dad do some farming now or whatever he needs. It's kind of nice. Yep. As long as the cows are gone, that makes it a lot nicer, isn't it? It's a lot. It's a lot nicer. I might not have moved back if we still had the cows. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're honest. One thing yeah. Yeah. that we talk about a lot, <clears throat> I want to know, like, successful pulls over the years, Colin, and you've been, you grew up with pulling, so this is a great question for you. And anybody watching, what are some things that a per that promoters do that make you come back year after year after year? Like right now, 
In college football, all people talk about is Deion Sanders. And why is that? Are there certain pulls, Colin? Or the NFL only talk about Taylor Swift or something. She's dating Jason Kelsey now or Travis Kelsey, right? So that's all they show. That's yeah. NFL and that. So polling-wise, like like a sizzle to the state, Colin, or, or something like that, what are the polls that you and your dad have been going to for years? Why are they great? What makes them great? And why do they continue to get big crowds year after year after year? Well, in terms of the crowd size, I just think it's, I think a lot of it's based on tradition. I know that's kind of, I don't know if that's an unpopular or not very hot take, but you know, tradition goes a long way in polls. Like we go to Houston every year or we used to go to the Houston hoedown with the tri-state days. That's just a big party and a lot of tradition. Toma's got a lot of tradition. Hillsborough's getting there, but I, I got to give a lot of credit to Dirk Drury, what he's doing with Highland. And I remember what he said on Dirk's uh, interview. He wanted Highland to be a event. He's an event, not just a pole, but an event. He's damn near there. Just with the amount of tractors he's got there and the quality of the show, the, how he moves everything through, stop, the, food, the food there is good. Stop. Define define an event. Define it. Don't And don't just put the tractor pull hat on. And this is what's hard, Colin, and that's what's fun about having you. You'll be really honest. What makes an, what makes an event versus a tractor pull or a truck pull? Because you and I have talked about this, Colin, off the air many times. It's entertainment dollar. Greg and I have talked about this. How do we get our promoters to know that? Put on a nice three-hour window, like, that's how long a good movie is, two to three hours, right? A NASCAR race, an NHR race. People have that attention span, that three-ish hours, right? Ball games. What, mm -hmm. When you say an event, yeah, college football game, an NFL game, a Packer game. Um, when you say an event, what does that mean? And people watching, why do you go to polls? What makes them great? Because that, Colin, it sucks that um, you're right about the whole nostalgia, like a Toma of the events that have been going on for 50 years, right? They just have that. What did you call it? Um, what did you yeah, call that, it? Colin? Yeah. The just what, the, tradition? The status tradition. Tradition. The tradition. How yeah. does the new promoter come out? Uh, how, how do they come out of the gates, Colin, and match that tradition? It's tough to say. Um, you know, that there's a lot of it is something – People want to take two, three days off, sit in, in either camp and bring eight to ten of their buddies, go watch a poll, th two, three hours, go back, sit next to the campfire, have a few drinks. You know, it's it's kind of like it's kind of the same as like you might go to your cabin once or twice a year. It's something something like that where you a lot of polling is based on the people, I'd say. You know, if we didn't get along with the people we were polling with, we wouldn't do it. So I'd. I think it's a lot of have to do with getting to see people. You know, when I go to Toma, it's a lot of groups of people. That's when that's their weekend to get together and enjoy some things. And that's for other polls too. It's their weekend for big groups of people to get together. Um, that's what I would say. Um, it's a mix. It's obviously it's a mixture of a lot of things. Um, a lot of you know, good food, uh, vendors, stuff for other stuff to do outside outside of the polling too that goes a long way also i agree with you con i like that's why i like macville too you know because mm -hmm. yeah that's a good example it's right when you get done with maybe spring planting and first crop hay and you have a weekend you're finally off you know and you get you pull on friday night and you don't pull till saturday and we all hang out all day saturday doing whatever you know and and you, it's just relaxing and it's a, that's a good time i think there yeah, I we thoroughly enjoyed Macville this year. Uh, the track was pretty decent this year. They did a good job improving it this year. Made the Light Pro class is really good there. I think we had twelve or thirteen mixed in with the Silver Series guys. Um, Macville's always been a big party atmosphere up there. I think it's that's one of the ones that gets the summer going, where you get the big crowds going. Uh, just a great group of great crowd there every year. They're really into it. Uh, and that's something, it's the biggest poll in that. I think it's something to do with the demographic there. That's the only big poll, really decent big poll up there, I'd say, that gets the national classes. So that's why they get the big crowds and stuff. And then the stuff they do, the the dash for the cast, I think, in the track, and it's a big fundraiser. People want to do something good for a cause. Um, that's what they got good going good for there, too. Good food there, too. The food's really good there. It is.
They have some of the best burgers around, I think. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yep. yep. One part at the event is an is an event like that because you know as well as I do, a lot of times you know we're just like a bunch of gypsies. We roll into town, unload, pull, load up, and roll. You're gone. So yep. by the time that announcing, you're gone, or somebody's gone. I don't even get a chance to say hi, or you know how are things going, or whatever. You know, a lot of times where you get an event like that, it's a Friday, Saturday night, like. Greg said, hey, you have a beer and shoot the breeze a little bit and, and talk about family and whatever's going on. It's it's fun. It's it's relaxing. It's nice to, you know, bounce around from trailer to trailer and chat with people. Yeah. That's a, that's a you know, weeknight polls, you know, I know we have to deal with them and that's what it is, but sometimes that seems like a job, you know. You, mm-hmm. you have to last minute to get going, get to the poll, and then get home because you have to be to work the next day, right? You know, it, it, that's it's stressful on every poller to do that yeah this is one of the first years i can remember we had two weekday polls because we had to go to beaver dam and then lancaster that was kind of a that felt almost like a three or four weekend sweep because it was just kind of stressful and getting you know getting off work get to the poll come back go to bed go to work and then go right to the polls again and come back it it was made those two days really full but at the same time, it's still fun to go see them compete against other people, and learn something, and try again next time. That's what, you know, even at, you know, it's tough with the number of tractors that we started out with in your class, but then we're getting more of them, you know, because I'll try not to sign any on top of WTPA. I always watch for that. Yeah. You know, and, uh, or, or any NTPA ones in the state, you know, so, and there is a couple places we could sign them, but it doesn't, it isn't fair to split them up, you know, and, and, and then both places are short tractors. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes, and sometimes, you know, you got to do what you got to do. I mean, it's, you know, a lot of those guys are, you know, way north of us. We're pretty fortunate. We're pretty much smack dad right in the middle, just south of Toma. So it's, you know, if we got to go north, it's two and a half hours. We got to go south, it's two and a half hours. If we got to go to Macville, that's two and a half. You know, it's, it's, we got, we've got a pretty good, split up group of tractors now below like the I-90, 94 corridor. It's, you can almost handle them being booked anymore. But I mean, at the same time, you kind of want to, you know, you, you get them all together. It's a really good class. And we promote, you know, us going, us going there, then coming down. We always promote them to come on down from a Badger State. You know, we tell them they're going to have fun. You know, it's a relaxed group of guys. You just want to go poll and have a good time too. Yep. Yep. That's what makes it good. Yep. So, I you got anything more for Colin? Do you guys have any of the questions? Or I appreciate your, you know, you and your dad and Randy and everybody calling up. It's been fun. You've been friends of mine for a long time, and uh, very fortunate. I mean, it. You guys helped. Your dad told me that hot farm was for sale. My twelve oh six I had back in the day, and um, you know, just good people always would give rides. When I was announcing for Tri State, you dragged me up around all those poles. That was a good time. Your dad bought me pie. Where is that Osseo? I forget that big piece of pie. At the at the North Skinook in Osseo. Yep, you used to go pulling up there. You were announcing. Piece of pie was this tall. It was awesome. They have I'm, thinking, the- I'm thinking about it right now. Thinking about it right now. So. Yep. Yep. You missed that pole in Osseo. That was a good time. Yep. I really I really appreciate uh, your comments too. To help, it helps our show a lot, Colin. When people you know, write in and, and ask questions and make comments. It does help. And I really appreciate everybody. That I would, I wish yeah. everybody that, that's watching, you know, just, it helps gives you something to talk about. It does. Yeah. Well, it's the idea of the whole podcast set up guys. You get on, you, you know, you have subjects and things like that. And that's why I don't mind having a, a guest cancel on us every now and then. I know we were kind of texting each other back and forth. What do we do? And, you know, it just, it's happened to before you just kind of wing it. And I'm glad Colin could jump on. Now, I did interrupt you. I am the king of interruptions when you're talking about Highland, and you said that's becoming an event. And then I said, stop. Tell me what an event is. Why Why is Highland, in your mind, Colin, becoming a destination? I like to call them destination pulls at, or an event. What, why is, what are they doing, Colin, that makes you so happy? I, their track is really good. They've got the food, and they've got the people. I want to be honest, when the first time wasn't when I was there, I thought the parking was kind of was weird, but it's Dirk's really taking care of that. It's there's no problems whatsoever now with the pole. It's Dirk's got it running like a brand new car, truck, whatever you want to say. It's he's got it running this 
show running so smooth and he does good with the equipment he has the quality equipment he got there he got some missouri guys to come up and that's just the sign of a good promoter i don't know maybe it's the polars that told them to come up but you know a good promoter calls around and asks polish from anywhere to come up you know not be shy you know i think i think one thing that helped him out too is having that pull in 2020 during the pandemic saying screw it we're having mm-hmm. and yep. i think People, I do know some guys that say, I'm going there no matter what, because they were willing to put it on the line to do it, and I'm going to support them from here on out. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that helped too, you know. Yeah. That was probably the biggest pull in the country in 2020. It was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's one. That was the one year. I think I missed it that year. I was out screwing around doing other stuff, but. Yeah, my I know when Dad come home and Randy them, they're really impressed. They couldn't believe the crowd they had over there. Yeah, we uh, we didn't we didn't we didn't plan on pulling it all that summer, and then all of a sudden, now we're going to go to Highland. We get the tractors out, dusted them off, and and change oil, and went up and pulled. Yeah, it was a yeah, fun we night. didn't pull. Yeah, I don't think we didn't pull till Norwalk had their pull, their normal weekend, and then it was like Webster City, and then they went down to Highland. It was like four or five poles right in a row, and that's that was our twenty twenty summer. Yep. Yep. I know my dad promotes a poll in Iowa, and that year they said the health inspector told, of Lynn County, Iowa, told my dad, I'm going to stand in the middle of the track, and somebody's going to have to run over me if you have that tractor pull. It's so dumb. What do you think we look back now on how – oh, I'm just, I'm just glad it's over. Yep. Just yeah. glad it's over. And then my pet peeve, if you're going to wear a mask still, and that's fine. Some people have legitimate health concerns. But if you're going to wear a mask, you wear that damn thing properly. I'm so sick of seeing people with a mask down around their freaking chin. I just want to go up and snap it. Right. So, it's just, uh, sorry. I was down and I went to Wagler's Fall Nationals. We stopped at um, Cracker Barrel and had breakfast yesterday morning. And three of the waitresses all look at Stranley. Yeah, let's do a. <laughs> we got we got seven minutes left before I need to get ready to go. I want to know, Colin, I want you to write down uh, your top 10 light pros in the country right now. And Greg and John and, and I are going to talk about our favorite places to eat when we're on the road. So, so Colin, you start writing down your top 10 light pros in the country right now. Not just Badger State, country. That you feel like if you were going to put together a, uh, let's say, a Pullers Championship type of a class, who would you who would you invite to that? John, where's your favorite place to eat when you're out on the road pulling? Like certain towns that you do that. And Greg, you're going to be next. Certain towns? Are, do you yeah, want like, like, you know, like, oh. We're going to Helenville, and we're going to stop at blah, 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 what, that kind of stuff. Or, Greg, anybody, Colin, you can jump in on this, too. So I don't think the eating on the way. We usually don't eat on the way. It's usually there. Cool. I, I guess a couple of my favorite ones is uh, is Edgerton and Maisel. They got the best damn pork chops at both of them. I mean, they're just you – know, Dave Wheeler from Edgerton, he, he cooks pork chops. Kind of reminds me of – Kendall Club Gardens that he that he cooked up at uh, Toma all the time is just just good food at the pulls. So that's that's the two of my favorites, I guess. Great. Any food? Yeah, I I like what the the hog roasters do up in Baraboo for the benefit pull to feed the pullers. That is always a good meal there. I I think you know, but I'm trying. We Emily makes a stop at Culver's every time we drive by one on the way to a pull. We have to stop at Culver's no matter what. <laughs> they, don't, they don't have those uh, in in Sauk, isn't that where it started? Greg? Yeah. <laughs> Every time we go south in Illinois, we you know we go through New Glarus that way, to through Monroe, and and we have to stop, wheel the semi into the Culvers in New Glarus. So that's that's Emily's deal and stuff like that. But you know, I love all right. My favorite burger though is in the pits in Darlington. That little shack behind an announcer stand. Yes, that is the best cheeseburger you're gonna eat. Anywheres, I like those. that's like the um the JCs or the Lions or the Knights of Columbus or something. If I remember, I think it's the Knights of Columbus for some reason. I think it is. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I that line never goes away. It's there no. for hours. Well, there's ten freaking thousand people on the on the on the stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that line <laughs> there at one in the morning after the poll's been done for three hours, that line is still there. Yep. yep. How about you? Oh, food. He looks Let's tired. See. He looks tired thinking about it. Is it a yeah, food I'm cold already. I'm in a food what? coma. 
let's see on the Badger State. I mean, those steak sandwiches at Highland are pretty good. I think that's what they had there. Uh, those are really good. Uh, the burger, like, said, like Greg said, the burgers at Macville are really good. Uh, but don't they have a Macville see. burger up there? Is that what they call it? Yeah. I yeah. feel like they do. Did you get yeah. the burger today? Did you see the curd burger came out from Culver's again today? Started again? Never had one. They put a big cheese curd on a che uh, bacon cheeseburger. Yeah, it looks like a big chicken patty, fried chicken patty, but it's a cheese curd. <laughs> yeah. Holy cheese cow. <laughs> the cheese curds, I think, is uh, Stoughton FFA alumni, their cheese curd shack. And they usually have it at Utica and uh, Dane County Fair and a few other places. And then the most depressing I had this year, going to the Green County Fall Nationals Lions Club down there has good cheese curds. But their deep fried mushrooms, breaded mushrooms, are the best, and they didn't have them this year. I don't know what the deal mm. is. I mean, I don't know what I was gonna do. I was like depressed. Too dry a year, maybe the mushrooms didn't grow. I don't know. Yeah. Don't know. Yeah. Jason, he's kind of like a mushroom, you know. He's always in the dark and fed a bunch of crap, you know. Right. <laughs> I deserve he'd be, it. He'd be a morel. A morale? Yeah. I, I always thought I'd be a fun guy. That was always that joke. I'd yeah. Fun. I said it. You're a fun guy. <laughs> uh, Had to get you on a gummy sometime and just see what, how you act. <laughs> <laughs> as long as we can video it, Greg. As long as we can video it. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. Carry yeah. on. Carry on. No, it's fun. It's fun. Colin, did you get your banquet tickets bought yet, or the um, the raffle? Yeah, we've got ours. We just stole. Dad sold. He took some out to. We went out for prime maybe the other day. And Kendall, I think he sold. I think he sold a book. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, this is the time of year where we'll start selling quite a bit of them. Now he's got some time to yeah. relax a little yeah. bit. No, it's a I good time. Blurge on Facebook. I think I've sold 20 now. Plus, whatever helped sell down to Monroe. So, yeah. yeah. Just tell them it's way better odds than the lottery. Right. Way yeah. better. Jackbox yeah. does a great job of that. And he puts his heart and soul into that. And uh, just nice to help him out a little bit with that. And help back your state. And so, I do my part, I guess. And then some a little bit. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, did you get your list done, Colin? Oh, yeah. I've, I've had, had it done quite a while now. It's in my head. All right. So, top top 10 light pros in the country today. Colin, go. Not in any order, but both yeah. Smiths have top, both Smiths, both Smith directors have to be in there. Uh, the Mark and Matt? Yes. Okay. Uh, Probably, if you add, probably Alan Cook and Kurt Offdahl from around from here, those two tractors run ungodly good. Uh, let's see, probably probably Plutzes. They didn't get out till late, but when they went out, they just killed everybody. Uh, yeah, they had more. They had more wins than they had second places. That's for sure. So yeah, they didn't get out till first weekend of July, and they just were nonstop, just winning. After I mean, they won the the bull that. Rock Valley, and then they won the Buck goal. I think that weekend at Hillsboro, they had two wins in a second because they went to Norwalk with us. Uh, so that'd be, let's see, that's five. Probably Smoots make that six. Uh, I've noticed a lot. One tractor that's running good this summer would be uh, Dave Armstrong's Rowdy Red, new chassis underneath that. That thing's running really good. Uh, eight seven or eight um probably probably Michel jeff michelacci with the mented that thing runs really good way out east there uh let's see i haven't forgotten any of the what uh probably probably grimes Gr the grimes tractor runs really good they had a full summer almost forgot the western series guys out there um 
I'll add Rich and I'll add I'll add Rich and Mike in there with the Shag Nasty. This is I know they struggle they kind of struggle pretty good in their setup, but that thing runs really good. So better move to the top team. You can't get it in ten. Yeah, it's it's there's if you limited to twenty, if there's the top twenty, it'd be really good. So it's that'd be my top ten for now. You know, it's it's it changed weekly if you went through the summer. Yeah. yeah. No, it's just I like to do power rankings. Last fall I had asked Wyatt Schulte and Shane Hunt and Charles to do some power rankings. We're gonna do pro stock power rankings tonight in about ten minutes on our show. Um, Bowling Green changed up some campground stuff, and I and I asked Dave Schultz to come on tonight, but he can't come on tonight, but he can come on next Monday. And then Hub City has their big truck drag races here in a couple weeks. We're gonna talk, we're gonna talk to Riley Anderson, but he can't come on now. So we're just gonna pro stock it tonight and then talk about I went we went up to the Wagler Fall Nationals this past weekend. We did that for beer money pulling.tv. Um, they all I think we only had five or six pro stocks for the um for the five thousand dollar to win deal, the ten thousand dollar purse, but uh Oh, Kevin Masterson does what Kevin Masterson does, and he laid one out there at 388 and won it. So um, it was a he old is, Kevin. He uh, <laughs> things on things on rails. Thing is on mm. rails. So and when he wants to win, he can win. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> just yeah. which which yeah. tractor? Was it? The rat. Just he just had the rat there. So yeah. yep. But it was a good time. Um, it was good to see everybody again, and a bunch of diesel trucks out there. We had 33 old diesel trucks and 26 two six trucks and 17 hot farms and it was a it was quite a weekend, quite a weekend, a lot of pulling. But that was pretty much starting to get wrapped up now. I'm not seeing much anymore in the Midwest really in October. I don't know, Colin, are you seeing anything going on anymore? Any brush no, pulls or anything? There's some pulls I've seen. There's a kind of a U.S. East like light pro super farm class out in Pennsylvania. I think other than that, it's getting pretty slim pickings now for. Yeah. Sanction poles, at least. Yep. Yeah, I'm heading to. Um, well, we got we got Lufkin, Texas, for the Outlaws, October 21st and 22nd. We got mods down there, two wheelers, three old diesel trucks, and pro stock tractors, the five O's, and then uh, we got diesels and dark corners, November 3rd and 4th. I know Cat is Ohio. Cat is Ohio is coming up this Saturday, and then um, I feel like I'm forgetting one more. I am. Oh, I'm going to the NC State Fair, North Carolina State Fair, with full pole. October 14th, 15th, and 16th. That's in Raleigh. That's a pretty, that's four nights out there. So that'll be fun. I'm going to announce with Bert. I don't know Bert's last name. I think it's Lewis, maybe, but he's uh, been announced. He announces for um, the NTPA has a region out there. Uh, and then PPL has United Pullers of the Carolinas, I think. I don't know how it works, yeah. but I know there's, there's a PPL sanctioned bunch out there. And there's an NTPA sanctioned bunch out there. And they kind of, they support each other really well. But I think the state fair is NTPA, but I don't remember. It doesn't matter. It's just going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time. So, yeah. Let's see everybody. Well, this went from, we thought we were just going to talk for five or 10 minutes. We put in a full show. Thanks to our good friend, Colin Burkholz. And to reiterate yeah. uh, Greg's point, Colin, we love having you on the shows and watching at home. The comments are fun. You, you always, you're always picking on people and having fun and I enjoy that. And you have good comments as well. So, yeah, I, I really, yeah that's. Really I, really I think that re, that's kind of what Badger State's all about. We say that to each other. We just laugh and have a good time, pat each other on the back, and go yep. and pull the pole, have some fun all summer. Yep. Well, so, whoop it up. Yep, whoop it on the track. Whoop it up on the track and whoop it up in the pits. Yep. Somebody says, yep. Somebody says Thompson, Ohio, this weekend. So we're on, the Badger State shows live on many, many different platforms, not just the Badger State platform. So we have people watching from all over the country on Monday night. So that's why it's fun to mix it up a little bit again. But this is the official podcast, video cast, if you will, of the um Greg get out to the field, Frank Molitor says. Yeah. So you're not in the, you're in the combine right now, aren't you, Greg? Do we have a green screen behind you? That we great. Set up? So, great. So nope. I could never teach you how to do a green screen, Greg. I'm just lucky we can get you on the show on Monday nights. So great. Right. Right. Colin, we're gonna let you go. You have a good night, buddy. Yep. Hey, thanks again um, for having me on, and I'll be commenting next time. Yep. All right. See you, buddy. Thanks for bailing us out, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> Colin Burkholz, uh, good people, just some of the fine quality human beings that are part of the Badger State Tractor Pulling Association. So good show, guys. That was fun. Uh, yep. Next week, Jason Vinny with the V, V for victory, your super 
farm points champion. And, you know, I'm going to probably say right away, Elsene, when we have him on, if Stranley can win on that tractor, obviously anybody can win on that right. tractor. Right. So, I mean, you know what I mean, Greg? Right. I think we should have a little bit of fun with that. So. We'll get some. <laughs> yeah, everybody drives and wins with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, shoot. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Him Great. coming over to my place what? here in the old studios. Yeah. So next Monday night, everybody, 7 o'clock Central Standard Time, Jason Vinny. Is he cranked up? Or, he's cranked up, right? Or is he all cranked up? All cranked up. All cranked, all cranked up. up. He's all cranked yeah. up. So he's all your 2023 up. Badger State Super Farm points champion and also a good friend and neighbor of the John Stranley down here on the bottom. Oh, this way. No, this way. This way yeah. Here. yeah. That's Stranley. Back, back to back points champion. Yep. That's awesome. Yep. That is awesome. Like Hard Big Farm Boys, uh, Casper Egg, Trip Downing, and Slime Enterprises again for helping us out. Awesome. Yep. Greg, Thank you. Yep. Greg, take it away. Give us something insightful before we, we show, shut the show down. Start taking your tractors apart now and get them sent out in the parts you need. So don't wait till March. <laughs> I think the builders would appreciate that too. So. Yep. 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 So start you guys, hang, you guys hang out. Greg, John, wait for me for just a second. So right. thanks for watching, everybody. We appreciate you watching Down and Dirty with the Badger State Tractor Pullers every Monday night. And if you can't catch us live, go to Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, whatever, iTunes, and search for uh, Down and Dirty with the Badger State Tractor Pullers, and you can find our awesome audio podcast as well. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. All right. Thanks. thanks. Thank you, everybody.